Europe is at the center of an energy crisis fueled by the war in Ukraine and exacerbated by climate change. And as European nations scramble to find alternative energy sources, Israel's offshore gas riches are positioning the Jewish state as a key player in the regional energy market. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu was in Cyprus earlier this week where he met with Cypriot and Greek leaders to discuss a solution to transport Israeli natural gas to Europe through Cyprus. Meanwhile, Energy Minister Israel Katz held separate talks with Turkish and Egyptian counterparts as well as the U.S. envoy on regional normalization efforts, Dan Shapiro, regarding gas exports in the eastern Mediterranean. And for more on this story, I'm joined by I-24 News anchor and economic expert, Alian Manganit. Alian, hi. Firstly, walk us through this plan to bring Israeli natural gas to Europe and how significant of a deal this is. Well, it's a very significant deal for Israel because Israel has more natural gas than it can consume or export at the moment. And that's just because it's not linked well to Europe or anywhere that it could basically trade right. the gas uh, with other than Jordan. Israel has been trying for years to find a solution to this. And as you said, the crisis in Europe is Israel's opportunity. Right. Finally, things uh, have come to a condition in which uh, these parties that have been discussing for a few years, Israel, uh, uh, Tur uh, Turkey on one hand, and Israel, uh, Cyprus, and Greece on the other hand, are both looking for the best avenue to export this Israeli gas to Europe. Israel, as I said, is very, very interested. And it is looking into both options at the moment. Netanyahu was in Nicosia, as you mentioned, to meet his counterparts both from Cyprus and from Greece in order to look deeper into the possibility of going for the Cypriot Greek option. According to this deal, the Cypriots are very much interested in the fact that Israel would basically um, uh, pipe the gas onwards to uh, Cyprus, where a liquidification uh, uh, process would happen on surface, and then that gas would move from there into Greece and from there to, to Europe. Israel is also looking into the option of uh, building its own floating liquidation process uh, facility of, of its own. Very cool stuff. So, Ariel, there are concerns that Israel might have potentially overestimated its export capabilities. Does Israel have enough natural gas to be able to, to fill its domestic needs and export abroad? Well, first of all, we're basing everything on estimates at the moment because, yes, there are estimates to how much natural gas there are in those reserves that have been found off the coast of Israel. But first of all, there's there, is, there, there are more reserves, uh, potentially, that Israel is, is looking at, uh, at exploring. And, and B, we're not sure about the exact number, uh, never, with these uh, um, uh, facilities. What we do know at the moment is that the people of Israel use around 1% of the gas discovered per year. That's it. Wow. So there, there's quite a lot, just to put it into mathematical perspective there. Right. So there is enough for export. And as I mentioned, Israel has at the moment more gas and it can consume more export. And hence, it's looking for these uh, avenues for export, namely building that pipeline, whether through Turkey or through uh, Cyprus and Greece, to Europe. And so Energy Minister Katz called Israel's offshore gas riches, and I quote, the key to regional deals. Is that a hint to Dan Shapiro's involvement in discussions with Egypt and Turkey? And I mean, could Israel's natural gas uh, exports help speed up normalization efforts with other countries in the region, specifically Arab countries? That's a very good question. It reminds me, first and foremost, of the Cypriot criticism of Israel uh, about the fact that Israel managed to reach a deal with Lebanon, an enemy country to its north about the gas reserves on the border of Israel, Lebanon, hence the maritime border was not, uh, you know, was in discussions just a few months ago. There was an agreement that was reached around that. The Cypriots are very concerned about the fact that there is also a gas reserve that is shared in territory sort of between Israel and uh, Cyprus in the territorial waters of both countries, and there hasn't been an agreement about that. So first of all, they're saying, you know, you've managed to reach an agreement with Lebanon, an enemy country, why can't we reach an agreement? So that's a piece of criticism. But to answer your, your uh, question more directly, 
Um, yes, of course, you know, money is power in the Middle East. Israel has always been regarded uh, uh, towards as uh, a country that is rich in mines and in, in high tech and, and in, in, in industry and, you know, the developed into high tech, etc., but not in natural resources under, other than the Dead Sea that we are destroying. But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but now Israel is a key player here. And definitely, as it managed to reach an agreement with Lebanon, you know, the fact that Israel has natural gas could definitely allow future agreements uh, uh, to uh, uh, come into fruition uh, with Saudi Arabia, with Egypt, when it comes to regional deals around oil and gas that are of the interest of all of these countries looking to export, for example, to Europe. All right.